Hemi's won six of those. David Pearson won the 66 championship with a Hemi, and Richard Petty in 1967 won it and had the most dominant season in the history of NASCAR. On November 12th, 1965, the Summers Brothers Goldenrod used four Hemis to run 409.645 miles an hour. It would be the world's fastest wheel-driven car until 1991, and it held its class record for unblown cars until 2010. 1966 was the first year that the general public could buy a 426 Hemi off the showroom floor. This was inspired by needing to have production numbers for NASCAR and because of all of the great marketing that the Hemi had done in drag racing. In September of 1967, Big Daddy Don Garlitz won the NHRA Nationals in top fuel. Now, he had a 426 Hemi in this thing because Dodge made him do it, and at the time, most of the other racers were still using the 50s 392-based Chrysler Hemi. We believe that this win by Garlitz was the very first time that a 426-based engine had won a major drag racing event in top fuel. In 1968, Dodge and Plymouth released my favorite muscle car of all time, the Super Stock Hemi Dart and Barracuda. These cars were so magical that these days they're the only car with an NHRA class just for them. Superstock A Hemi is only for the 1968 Hemi Dart and Coupe. In 1969, Dodge was out to destroy NASCAR again, and they released the Dodge Daytona for aerodynamics. And on March 24th, 1970, Buddy Baker got in a Chrysler engineering car, and on a closed track, he ran 200.447 miles an hour. It was the very first time that a car had exceeded 200 miles an hour on a closed course, and it was done with a 426 Hemi. NASCAR hurt the Hemi again in 1971, limiting the aero cars to 305 cubic inches. Bobby Isaac solved that problem by going to the Bonneville Salt Flats and ran a big oval track there and set a ton of endurance racing records and a flying mile record of 216.945 miles an hour. In March of 1970, Don Garlitz had a transmission explosion that sawed his top fuel dragster in half. It was a front-engined car, and in the hospital, he started drawing up a sketch for a rear-engined car. It wasn't the first, but it was the most successful. He won the 1971 Winter Nationals with a rear-engined car, and then followed that up weeks later at the March meet in California, and he did it with 426 Hemi power and set the world on notice that everybody was going to be going to the rear engine configuration. Now it's 1975, and even after the rear engine dragster conversion, a lot of guys were still running the 50s 392 Hemi until Keith Black came along. He made an aluminum 426 block that would start the change so that everybody would be running a 426 Hemi. That's the end of the history lesson. These days, the 426 Hemi has been refined by engine builders and it wins everywhere that it races, especially in drag racing. As a matter of fact, there is not an NHRA alcohol dragster or funny car that runs anything but a 426. And of course, the same is true in the Nitro classes. And the quickest drag cars in the world are the NHRA Nitro funny car and top fuel dragster, both powered by an engine with the configuration of a 426 Hemi. In the end, one of the greatest achievements was done by Danny Thompson, who took his Hemi-powered Streamliner to Bonneville and ran 448.757 miles an hour for the record as a two-way average. His top speed, 459.588. It made him the world's quickest piston-powered car. And of course, it was done with engines based on, you guessed it, the 426 Hemi. You are looking live at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway on a day of anticipation and celebration and a historic day in the history of Dodge as we get set to unveil the final last call model.
the city that never sleeps, then it has to be just as true for the city that never slows down. Las Vegas is a bucket list destination to the world. And speaking of not going slow, we're at the center of speed for Las Vegas and a strip of another kind. Las Vegas Motor Speedway Drag Strip and a huge surprise in store. Oh yeah, what an amazing day it has been out here at the Drag Strip. Hello and welcome to Dodge Presents Roadkill Nights and the reveal of the final last call model. My name is Chris Jacobs. It is my honor to be your host here. We got a full grandstand. How you guys doing out there? Oh yeah, you guys are here on a fantastic occasion as I bring in my co-host, someone who is no stranger to the Drag Strip, Alex Taylor. How you doing? Excited to be here. It's been a fantastic day. In addition to all the military jets that have been flying over the track, there's been a lot of action on the track itself, drag racing all day long. Absolutely, it's been great to see the Roadkill Knights come to Vegas and expand. We have drifting and show and shine and all the good stuff. And of course, it's been an active day outside the drag strip as well. Tons of SRT vehicles just outside there. As the track cleaner goes by me once again, everything makes noise out here, including once again, our crowd in the grandstand. Everybody is pumped up. Now tonight, this is the final last call model. Six have been unveiled so far, and tonight is number seven, of course, celebrating the ICE going out in style. I am so excited to see it. I can't wait to see it. The six prior have been amazing, so. My favorite so far, of course, is the Black Ghost, paying homage to the original Black Ghost, the 1970 Challenger RTSE that is actually here on site. So the Black Ghost last call was number six of number seven, and of course tonight, number seven, and there's a huge amount of anticipation. And the King Daytona prior, number five, adding, adding to that, we have lots of exclusivity, and that comes tonight as well. Absolutely, and those are instant collectibles. Only 300 of the Black Ghost, 300 of the King Daytona. Who knows what this number seven is going to present? You're looking at some of the vehicles that we have trackside right now. And man, I am just giddy with anticipation earlier. So much going on here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And check out a little bit of the action. See a shot of some of the drag SRTs that are making their way out to the starting grid, warming up those tires. Oh, absolutely. I think the only thing that would have been better is if we were both out there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, especially you. You are you're a pro. I'm just an amateur out yeah, there. I'm getting a look at the uh, Dodge thrill ride. Yep, yep. Always exciting. And absolutely. it's been a great turnout out here. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Crowd getting favorite. Lots of front airs, <laughs> front ends off the drag strip. You got to love that. For sure. Absolutely whipping down the track there. It's been just an absolutely amazing day out a here. A buy into the final, a win, it's pretty cool as well. Very, very cool. David Freiberger did a great job calling the, uh, the, the races all day long. And look at that, smokescreen special roaring down the track. Both shoots prevailing out there. And of course the final results, small tire, Chris Yanez, big tire, Christopher Thompson. So congratulations to Chris and Christopher. Kudos to those guys. Yeah, it's got to be a ton of fun whipping down there. Where's our first guy? Chop. Chop, are you in the house somewhere? He's so handsome. He's filled with bling. Let's take a little walk and see if we can find Chop. Chop is actually the number one Dodge dealer in the world. And he's never late for anything except for this interview, apparently. Chop, are you in the house, my man? We got full sun to get that sparkly bling on camera. Here he comes making an entrance across the track. How about a round of applause for Chop? Any locals here in Vegas know who he is? Of course they do. What's up, baby? <laughs> Great to see you. Good to see you, my man. So, exciting day for Dodge. We're so excited to be here. All the car dealers, we're ready for some excitement. We're hearing things, we're hearing things. At how many, are you just getting orders, phone ringing off the hook for these last call cars? Our phones are exploding right now. Our phones are melting down. Our salespeople are so excited. This is crazy. This is happening. We feel so lucky that this is our brand and the leadership with Tim and Bob and everybody on the team. I'm so appreciative and so uh, proud of everybody for all the hard work they've been doing. 
You happen to have a, a last call black ghost slot for me? I have one. I have one for you. Do you? <laughs> don't tell nobody. Everybody wants that car. Everybody wants that car. I, I am not going to tell anybody. You guys don't tell anybody, all right? But I'm getting a, a last call black ghost from Chop. We appreciate you, man. Now, what have you heard about this last one? I mean, you got to be anticipating being the dealer of Dodge uh, as you are. Yeah, there's a lot of whispers about this final call, this last call. We're so excited, and uh, I'm just ready for something big. It's got to be big, right? Because Tim and Bob, they don't play around. It's always something big. Uh, we're excited. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Let's get is, is Vegas ready? You guys ready to go? You guys ready to see this car? Last, last question for you before I kick it to Alex. What has been your favorite last call model so far? Um, I, I like the King, uh, they call me King of Cars, so I like that King Charger, it's, it's my baby, you know, I got one put off to the side, and the Black Ghost, everybody's freaking out, so I'm, uh, it's, it's between the two. I love it. Alex, let's kick it over to you, who you got? Here with Dominic Montori, president of Mickey Thompson, talk about a legacy company to celebrate in the era of muscle car. Unbelievable. We celebrate our 60th year this year, and there's no better way to do it with Las Vegas as the backdrop. Man, I, great day out here, you guys. Talk about a little bit uh, history of Mickey Thompson, built by a racer, for a racer. And still for racers. I mean, everything we do is always through the lens of competition. It starts at the track, and that's what we do every day, is how can we get better, faster, and just do it with more power. Right, absolutely. So today, are you excited about the last call? It's all about the last call. To think about what this is going to mean tonight, what we get to unveil here is incredible. It's been an unbelievable partnership with Dodge, so we couldn't be happier. Absolutely. So excited to see it. So excited to have you guys out here as well. So yes. it's awesome. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, no stranger to Mopar love and Dodge Madness. The blue on black man himself, Kenny Wayne Shepard. Good to see you, brother. What's up, Chris? How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How do you uh, feel being out here today? I'm fired up, man. This is uh, this has been one hell of a buildup to this thing, you know. And I mean, I thought the hype was big when I got my demon back in 2018, and we don't know what's coming today, but I'm I'm ready for it. I'm telling you. Yeah, this, you know, Dodge does it better than anybody else. They truly lead the pack in muscle madness. Do you have a favorite last call leading up to this one coming tonight? I mean, I think they're all pretty cool. The Black Ghost is awesome, and I really like the color scheme that's on the, uh, what is it, the Swinger Edition, right? Yep, yep. And uh, that's beautiful, but I just got to tell you, man, I'm here for this. This is what this is what I'm here for, and everybody, everybody that's here knows that Dodge does it right. They do it for real, and that's why we're here, because we know they're going to be bringing it. Totally, man. This is really cool, and we're going to get some more footage on the uh, big screen up there. Oh, yeah. It's been a great day today. Talk a little bit about what we're seeing on screen there, Kenny. Well, that's when I did a, uh, a story with Hot Rod, the Hot Rod Network, and I took my demon to the track for the very first time. So we did a story of what it's like to be a demon owner and using all the items in the crate and taking your car to the track for the first time and using uh, things like the trans brake and getting to know all the characteristics of the vehicle. And it was a really great time. I almost caught... Uh, air on the front wheels on that pass right there, man. Almost got a wheelie. I saw that. That was awesome. And of course, you know, Radford Racing School teaches you how to do those kind of things like trans braking. In fact, if you buy an SRT vehicle, Radford Racing School is the official racing school of Dodge SRT. You get a free day at the track if you get an SRT vehicle. You ever been out there to Radford? Absolutely, man. And I highly recommend it. Even if you don't get an SRT vehicle, go check out Radford Racing because it's a heck of a great time. Love it, man. All right. As one of the military jets flies above head making some noise let's kick it back over to Alex so we're here with her here with Der Herman from demonology what's and up? Weston Champlin what's up hey can I hear you say good low can I hear you say good low the soul statue is in the house <laughs> god dang you are hyping up the audience now aren't you oh my <laughs> god you guys are making me look bad out here but it's an exciting day right of course it's an exciting day there's a really, really nice car, and I, I'm excited to see it. I don't know where it's at. I think it might be underneath the cover over there. I don't know yet. But <laughs> So you guys might remember them from the Rogue Hill Knights Direct Connection Grudge Match. That was a good time, and I kind of I kind of beat you guys. Well, you know, we'll give you that one. <laughs> hey, hey, that's just – my car was overheating or something. You know what I mean? We'll, just, we'll blame it on that. <laughs> good times, right? So uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Well, you know, Dodge is the best brand out there on the market. It's Dodge number one. 
There you go, baby. We got them all scared. And what's coming out today is going to seal it for the world. Dodge is literally the craziest Dodge company, the craziest car company out there in the world. And the thing is, is Hellcats and Dodge have become such an icon and such a dream for so many people to buy, including myself. And finally, when I first got one, I think I sat in that car and just stared at it for two, three straight days. <laughs> Absolutely. So, do you have a favorite last call model yet? My favorite last call is going to be the fastest one. I see what you did there. <laughs> Hey, I got to go fast. I got to snatch souls. You need some help. You need some help. I need I'm some just help. <laughs> Definitely the last one. Oh, you just, I see what you did there. I, <laughs> I got I to slide in. I want the coolest one. I want, I want the last one. I want it so freaking bad. I'll probably end up doing some stupid hey, stuff hey, with hey, it. But hey, 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 hey. You know, what? <laughs> Turbos, nitrous, you know. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. You guys are a mess. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see what's coming up, excited to see the last one, and we are almost there. Hey, there you go. Black Ghost, love the Black Ghost, but the last one is, hey, you know, fastest is better. Well, thank you guys. Uh, Chris has a special ghost. Uh, Chris Chris has a special guest. Uh, here you go, Chris. I, I have a very special guest, a man who needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway, the legendary car guy himself, well, Jay you, Leno. Thank you very much. We're excited <laughs> to be here. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool to be here on this historic day for Dodge. Yeah, it is. It really is a historic day. You know, I've been a Dodge guy. I've got a 66 Hemi car. I've got a 68 uh, uh, GTS 383. I've got a 71 Hemi Challengers. And I've got my my Hellcat, so yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I, I I go all the way back. You you spanned the uh, the the full gamut of the Dodge. full gamut. That's right. <laughs> and you know this is the you know we always talk about the '60s like that was the golden age of the muscle car, but they didn't stop or go around corners. You know now you've got cars that handle, uh, they go fast, they get good gas mileage. This is really the golden age. I mean you're seeing cars like the Hellcat, 707 horsepower, 800 horsepower. I mean, those were numbers people can only dream of years ago, and especially in a car that's going to pass emissions and, and meet the, all the standards, you know? Yeah, you know, we were on call last week, too, and you said something so interesting. You said that Dodge is really the only brand that really can say they're a muscle car. Well, I, I like the fact that they embrace it. You know, everybody else has to pretend, oh, well, oh, well, yes, yeah, you know, and they have to kind of, it, Dodge does those kick-ass commercials, and it, it makes me laugh because it's honest. That's what people like. You like the performance, you know. I, I always consider the, uh, the Hellcat the, the great American road trip car. You know, it doesn't have those little skinny butter clutching Recaro seats where you, your ass is killing you all the way, you know. It's got a big, comfortable chair. It's got a manual gearbox, and it's just a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, your collection is probably the greatest collection that I've ever been in, and, and your Dodges certainly stand out, but is there anything missing from your collection, anything you're going after? No, I like everything. I buy the story as much as I buy the car. A lot of times, you know, I'll meet a guy who's had a car since the 50s, and he's modified it since he's a, a young man, and he's in his 80s now, and he's still driving it. And when I get something like that that's got some history to it, it can be any brand, you know? As they take your mic away from you, Jay. That's the first time that's ever happened, I'm sure. I'm not quite sure what happened. There. Yeah. So take me back to the beginning of your love of the car. What was the first car you fell in love with, and what car started your collection? Well, I, I didn't really think of the collection. I just never sold anything, you know. I just kept everything that I had. The first car I ever bought was a 34 Ford pickup truck. I got that when I was 14, and my dad said, you got two years to get it running, which we did, and then I got it running. And you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. It had mechanical brakes, but since I, I rebuilt it and, and worked on it myself, I didn't abuse it. I had friends that were, you know, rolling cars and crashing and stuff. But when you fix it and you, you put your heart and soul in it, you, you want to see it stay good. You know, my dad knew that that, that would work for me. So uh, the first car I bought when I came to California is my 55 Buick Roadmaster, which I still have. And we put the very first uh, General Motors uh, 472 the first block, they gave it to me, and we put it in that, about 600, 650 horsepower, and I still got that car. I drove it to my first Tonight Show, I drove it to my last Tonight Show. I got married in that car. Yeah, I still got it. So never sell anything. That's the first part, yeah. That's your motto, basically, which is how your collection keeps getting bigger. But, you know, it's funny because people think, oh, you waste your money putting money in cars. But you know something? If, if you like it and you're reasonably knowledgeable, other people like it, too. And you see the prices that... I, I mean, I remember passing 
in the late 70s on a 65 Shelby 350 GT for 600 bucks because it ran, but it was kind of beat up. I can find a better car. Now that car is probably $300,000, $400,000. I had somebody give me a Lamborghini Miura in the early 80s because the engine was blown, and his wife said, get that thing out of here. It doesn't run. You're never going to fix it. You have to write to Italy in Italian to try and find parts. So she said, give it to Leno. He saves all that stuff. And of course, now the guy has hung himself, but the car is worth you know, a fortune. Yeah. Is that the yellow one or the orange one? Because I know you got two of them now. That was the yellow one. That was the yellow one. Yeah, yeah. So, so like I say, if, if you like it and you're knowledgeable, other people like it too, and, and they do go up in value. So it's kind of fun to know you can invest in a hobby, and in the event that you do have to move it out at some time, you're not going to lose your shirt, you know? Now, I live in Burbank, California, and one of my favorite things is seeing you cruising around town in one of your many, many cars. How often do you do that, and how much joy does that give you to get out there and actually drive them? I, I pretty, much, pretty much do it every day. Uh, I like everything, gas, steam, electric, you know. I like anything that rolls, explodes, and makes noise. In fact, the one actually exploded in my face, and I, my face caught fire, and that was, kind of, that was kind of stupid. Yeah, but that's okay. Read this story on Haggerty. Thank you for sharing that and being so open about it. But no worse for the wear. You're, you're all better now, right? No, no. This is a brand new face. Yeah, this is for the second time in my career. I'm the new face of comedy, so it's okay. And tell me also about not only loving to drive cars and collect cars, but you love working on them, too. Yeah, I, I, I like the whole, just the whole, the whole, oh, are we still on it? I like, the, I like the whole deal. Are we off? Oh, no. We on? Can you hear us? There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I, there's this, you know, it's so funny. We live in a world where nobody's ever happy with anything. And like when you're in a business like I am, like comedy, some people think you're funny, some people think you suck, and they're both right. But when it's something is broken and you get it running, no one can say it's not running, you know? So after you have a frustrating day of show business, people tell me you suck and this wasn't funny. You know, when you go in the garage and you tune something up and you get it running, there's a great satisfaction in doing that. You know, and I think it's really just something more people need to get more involved with, you know, because it gets your mind, you can't watch Netflix all the time, you know, sometimes you have to go in the garage and actually, and fix something, and when, uh, even when I was a kid, when I, I always prided myself, I could always get a car home, okay, let's open the hood, that was almost as much fun as the actual journey, of just figuring out what we got to do to get this thing running again, and then, hey, you pull in, you know, gas leaking all over the place, yeah. Great sense of accomplishment. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the last car vehicles. We're seeing the final one this evening. Do you have a favorite one so far? Well, uh, 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 what you mean of the Dodges? Say it again. What, a favorite of what? A favorite last call. A favorite last call. Yes, I, I love the Black Ghost. Some people like the uh, the Daytona. Oh, I see. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know what you're talking about. Um, no, I don't, you know, I like, I like everything. I, I, I don't really... You know, I, I, I'm so proud of anybody can make something the best that it can possibly be, that it's hard to go, I like this one and not this, and then I feel like I'm putting somebody else down, you know? So it's, it's I, like the whole, I like the whole deal, I like all of it. I like the fact that people can get this far with something. You know, I don't have to be a, a singer to appreciate a good voice, you know? I can go, oh, well, that person's really good. It doesn't mean they're better than somebody else, you know? It, it's just the fact that you, you work so hard, you, you do so much to get something working. So I, I don't like to say, oh yes, I picked that one over this one, so. But Jay Leno, you're a great ambassador to the car world. You represent us very well. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. This is the stickiest track I've ever I know, we're not going anywhere because we can't pull our shoes off the track here. Round of applause for Mr. Jay Leno, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim Kaniskas. The video had no sound. Come on out. Hi everybody, you having fun? This 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 turnout is unbelievable. My God, we say we're gonna throw a party on a Monday night in Vegas, and this many people show up. It's unreal. Um, whether you've been here all day watching the Horsepower Circus live, or you're tuned into the live stream from around the world, thank you. Thank you for joining us, and I want to give a special shout out and thank you to our dealers who made the trip to be with us here tonight. I know you came for Wednesday's meeting where we're gonna be showing you everything that's coming from Dodge for the next five years, but we could not resist sharing this, this very special moment in Dodge's history with you, all together at the same time. The factory, our dealer partners, and our loyal customers. Just look around at this crowd. This is the brotherhood. So, if we really are truly drawn together with common interests, I guess we have kind of a bond. And that bond was tested recently. And it wasn't on your side, it was on ours. Now, sure, some of you got a little nasty behind your keyboards, but when we deserve it, we deserve it. And to be honest, we deserved it on the Direct Connection stage kits. We way underestimated how long it was gonna take to get them emission certified. And clearly, we red-lighted on this one. But today, we're making it right. Effective immediately, not one, but all, all Hellcat, all Red Eye, pre-stage, stage one, stage two, from 2015 to 2022, every one of them has been approved. So, if what you see here tonight isn't for you, because you'd rather build it than buy it, we got you covered. Finally, it took too long, I know, but we got you covered. You can now go to your local Dodge Power Broker dealer and build an emissions legal, emissions legal, 885 horsepower red eye with a full factory warranty. Now, I'll be honest, if that wasn't so long in coming, that would have been a really tough announcement to follow. But then again, we have a very long history of being late and coming back hard and punching way above our weight. And what we're gonna show you tonight deserves to not be second to anything. Because for over 100 years, Dodge's brand positioning wasn't born out of necessity. It was probably born a little bit more out of spite than anything else. It's like a giant chip that we've been carrying around on our shoulder since the Dodge brothers got into their first bar fight. If you look at our past right here, it's clear that many of our best, most exciting products were born because we were backed into a corner. We were born to fight back. You look at the first car, the 1914 Dodge. This car was born because Henry Ford pissed the brothers off and they decided to go build their own better car. The 1956 D500. This was the most powerful Gen 1 Hemi car of its day. The Gen 1 Hemi car, or the Gen 1 Hemi rather, wasn't the first mass-produced overhead valve V8. It was the second to the fight, so it had everything to prove, and that car did. The 56 D500 won 11 NASCAR races that year. And it was literally, that was literally a muscle car before the term even existed. 68 Dart, the Hemi Dart. This was the second generation Hemi. That Hemi dominated super stock drag racing. And it also, same engine, dominated NASCAR. It was so good that they banned it. The next couple of years after that in NASCAR, Dodge was struggling, I'll be honest. So NASCAR let the Hemi back in. And then we wrapped it in that. The 69 Daytona. The result, you guys all know, first 200 mile per hour NASCAR, and they banned it again. You starting to see where that chip on our shoulder is coming from? Then in 1970, again, coming from behind, the Mustang and Camaro were killing it in the marketplace. 
and we didn't have anything to compete. So we brought the Challenger and it stole the show. And today it's one of the most collectible muscle cars on earth. Then, let's be honest, the performance world went into a little bit of a hibernation for a few years. Fast forward to the 80s, cheap, light, 200 horsepower, ruled the day. We were selling K cars. So we took the Omni and we did the GLH. It was a cool car for a K car, come on. And then we dropped the Turbo 3 motor in the Spirit. That Spirit was the fastest sedan in the world that year. No one could argue that we were making the most out of everything that we had in our toolbox. Then the 90s, we shocked the world with the Viper. There is, there is no question that we sold more Viper posters than any car we've ever built. That car was such an amazing halo. But it was really low volume and it was very expensive compared to the Mustang and the Camaro. So in the 2000s, right there in orange, in the 2000s, we were late to the party again. We brought the L-Series Chargers and Challengers. These cars, especially the Challenger, were much truer to the original muscle car formula than any of the competitors. But unlike some of these other cars that I just rattled off, that Challenger wasn't just late. It had a real problem. And we're all friends, so we can admit it. It was bigger, it was heavier, and it was underpowered. So after nearly 100 years of showing up late, we've always been fueled by the need to push a little bit harder and give that last tenth of effort. Because when you get it right, it doesn't matter. You're never late. If you get creative, nothing's over till you decide it's over. So we launched the Hellcat when everyone was counting us out. And that became the best known engine. We saw a lot of beer today. That became the best known engine in the general market. It took the Dodge attitude and it supercharged it. It was like pouring gas on a fire. Those were amazing years for the brand. The brand was riding so high, but you guys all know the story. Emissions compliance was becoming our toughest competitor. So we knew the lights were coming out at any moment for the last call, but we weren't gonna go away quietly, no way. So we turned it up again, and we did the Demon. Now this was the Dodge that crossed over. It crossed over from this group, it crossed over from the enthusiasts to the mainstream and pop culture. From the Hot Rod Magazine to Good Morning America. This car wasn't bench raced in online forums. This was the car that the general market talked about on morning shows. They asked for it to be banned from public roads. And in the end, only NHRA banned it for being too fast. That car, the Demon, six years later is still the benchmark of factory crazy and production straight line performance. Now that was it. That was it. That was supposed to be the pinnacle six years ago. Sure, we were gonna part it out and we would do the red eye and the super stock later, but ultimately we knew we were on borrowed time. We just couldn't sustain the compliance headwinds for very much longer. But just like a Fast and Furious movie plot twist, and before that legendary platform could be retired, and before we could transition to something new, our group entered into one of the largest automotive mergers in history. And then COVID hit the US. Those early days of the pandemic, people were worried about way more important things than replacing the platform for the Charger and Challenger. So the platform got a new lease on life. It got an extension. The enthusiast community, all of us rejoiced. Hemis for everybody. But again, we knew we were living on that borrowed time and we were gonna have to settle up at some point soon. So let's be clear. We didn't ask for those rules to change. We don't want those rules to change, but they did. And so we have to, we have to change, we have to adapt. But think back to all those cars that I just rattled off. They all answered a question, a challenge. They were brought to market to show the world that the only way you could not be first and not be last is to be better than whoever was first. So while everyone else is gonna bring an electric car to market, Dodge is gonna bring a muscle car and use electrification to make it not more politically correct, but to make it faster and dodgier. So you know what, efficiency be damned. We always wanted to do a 68 Charger, and this was our chance. We just needed to study the rules and find ways to do something cool that could comply and make them happy without spiritually retreating from the things that we love. That Charger Daytona has what it takes to do exactly that. The new Charger Daytona will redefine American muscle. 
And don't worry. Don't worry, you know us. We haven't fully pulled back the curtain on this car or maybe these cars just yet. Okay, so let's be clear, electrification is our future. That car is our future. But that's a year away. What can Dodge do now? What can we do today to celebrate the end of this era? To celebrate what got this brand to where it is today? The number one selling muscle car in America the last two years running. Well, I kind of already told you. I mean, I said all seven last call cars would commemorate a special car that came from our past. Shakedown, Swinger, Ghost. The only question is, which special car from our past will number seven be? Which one of those cars that's sitting right there? The first six are all awesome special editions, no question, but they represent us. They represent the enthusiast community and the things that we love and know and respect. But to celebrate the end of an era, we needed to go so extreme that it will go mainstream. And like I said earlier, Dodge's best products come as a result of being late to the party and having a chip on our shoulder. But it doesn't make sense. Hellcats, Red Eyes, and Demons are unrivaled in the marketplace. So what chip could we have on our shoulder now? Well, a couple of years ago, when we reorganized and stepped away from SRT, everyone said the Department of Batshit Crazy was closed. People were saying, SRT is dead. We said, bullshit, brick and mortar can't contain crazy. So we were determined to prove everyone wrong while proving to the world that SRT is still in our DNA and prove to the world that we can still do crazy better than anyone. To prove to the world that the last tenth is the only thing that matters to some. I'm sorry. But at any point in our history, did we ever give you the idea you could be Dodge material. That somehow... Demon got hold of me. Demon, huh? <laughs> we didn't know exactly what the f*** we were doing. The Dodge Demon, a leading automotive magazine, calls it too much. Experts have called for the Dodge Demon to be banned from the NHRA. Not for the faint of heart. The Demon was the fastest, loudest, most Dodge Dodge in the history of Dodge until now. Go. Comes the chopper. So, to drop our times even further, Dodge is gonna drop another legend on the world here tonight. Literally, not at an auto show, not on TV, not on social. We're gonna drop another legend right here on this drag strip where legends like this are made. All right, we're looking for him. Here we go.
That's how Dodge makes an entrance. You probably all think we had that well planned out, but I was freaking out there for a minute. You know, six years ago, I said that most cars that attempt to be everything to everybody, but there are a few that revel in a singular mission, rendering them totally irresistible to a subculture obsessed with that objective. This car was conceived, designed, engineered for that subculture of enthusiasts who know that a tenth is a car length and a half a second is your reputation. If you're here, or if you're watching this online, I'm talking to you. We built that car for you. And yes, pretty obvious now, number seven is a demon. More accurately, this is the new 2023 Challenger SRT Demon 170. And if you think it makes a badass entrance, just wait till you see how it leaves. We call it the 170 because it's 170 proof. The Demon 170 is the world's first production street legal drag car that runs, that runs on ethanol. or gas, runs on ethanol, or gas, or any combination in between. It automatically recalibrates for maximum power regardless of the mixture you're running. Yeah, the 170 is the world's first environmentally friendly, sustainable energy powered muscle car. I'm serious, ethanol fueled vehicles have a carbon footprint that's 20% lower than gas. But let's be real, the Demon 170 isn't gonna save the polar bears, but it's clean enough to keep us out of trouble. I'm not gonna promise that for any of you to buy one though. This is what happens. This is what happens when our team takes the infamous demon and puts it on alcohol. Now for most, that would have been enough to call it a worthy last call. But this is more than a last call with alcohol. Normally at this point, if we didn't have somebody dragging the track, The factory guy standing on stage will tell you about all the best in class features that none of you care about. The screen size, the miles per gallon, the cup holders, all that crap. But the Demon 170 has no class, or segment for that matter, it has no rules, it has no compromises. We took everything that that original Demon did that stood unrivaled for six years, and we turned it up to 11. Actually, more like 22, because that's how much boost we're pumping into this Hemi with a new three liter supercharger and a 105 millimeter throttle body. We're pumping so much air into this 6.2 Hemi that it took our cylinder pressures up to 2,500 PSI. That's 25% more than we were running on that Demon on race fuel. So to keep all the inside parts inside, we upgraded the entire engine. New block machining, new pistons, new rods, new crank, new bearings, new head machining for head studs, it even has billet steel main caps and a fluid dampener. This isn't regular production car stuff. This is full race technology. And it's what these engines needed to pass our durability and earn a full factory warranty. But then, pushing all that power downstream, we started tearing up the drive line. So we installed a larger drive shaft, much larger drive shaft, 43 spline half shafts, a massive 240 millimeter differential, a new case, reinforced mounting, hardware, making it 50% stronger than that original Demon. And at the end of that power flow, we're spinning the trickiest set of wheels ever used on a production car. Others have used carbon fiber wheels before, but these wheels are an exclusive Lax Industries design using lightweight alloy center sections, titanium bolted to carbon fiber rims. 
These are true street legal road wheels that are actually lighter than full race alloys. Then we wrapped them, you probably already noticed, we wrapped them in massive 315, 50, 17 Mickey, Mickey Thompsons with 18s in the front. The stance on this car is pure drag car. And we no longer needed the front runners at the track. The significantly increased contact patch, sidewall, sidewall construction, and aggressive compound of these Mickeys allowed us to electronically and mechanically retune the suspension that was in the original car. We increased the compression in the rear by over 50%, and we slowed down the rebound in the front to generate quicker forward movement at launch when it matters the most. And you're gonna love this. To make that launch even harder and more consistent, we completely redesigned the Demon's Trans Brake and launch mode. The new system allows you to electronically reshape the torque curve during acceleration and shifts right from the head unit to compensate for track conditions. Once the system is dialed in, you can go watt from green on a prep track. You no longer have to pedal this car at all. Now, I'm not sure how well this track is prepped. Obviously, we just had to drag it again. But we wouldn't build a car like this and bring you all out to the desert have you tune in on the live stream just to show you what it looks like coming in on a helicopter or sitting on the drag strip. So, who wants to see what it runs? at over two G's with 60 foot times in the 120s, run zero to 60 in a record, NHRA certified 1.66 seconds. And the quarter mile in a record, NHRA certified 8.9 seconds at 151. Yes. The Demon 170 is history's first eight-second factory muscle car. Producing 1,025 horsepower and 945 pound-feet of torque. The Demon 170 got us more than records and claims. It got us another letter from the NHRA. Yeah, banned again. But at least this time, the parachute will be available from Direct Connection as an option. Because we're Dodge. And that chute is more than a safety measure. It stands for something. Ironically, it stands for never slowing down. It stands for giving it all you've got when the world thinks you've got nothing left to give. And delivering products like the 23 Challenger SRT Demon 170. That is the quickest fastest, most powerful mass-produced vehicle in the world.
make the most powerful muscle car in the world. You might think we signed a deal with the devil. That's ridiculous. We just summoned a demon. Some folks do it for money. Others do it for free. Why anyone else would bother? Never meant much to me. Some call it obsession. Something like a possession. But me, myself, and Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for CEO of Dodge, Tim Kuniskis. And of course, our driver, Jim Wilder. And last but certainly not least, the final last call model, the DC-170. Tim and Jim, congratulations, guys. Talk about a giggle factor. I can't wipe the smile off my face after that. That's impressive. Could we have ever anticipated an arrival like that? The arrival, the performance, the numbers, all of it, it's amazing. Just incredible. A shout out for our helicopter pilot landing the DC-170 perfectly on the drag strip. That was truly incredible to watch. Who else was mesmerized by that? <laughs> I Everyone's got it, their hands up. Seeing it go right over the top. It was terrifying and amazing all at the same time. I was thinking to myself, hey, you got to go some way. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool way to go. <laughs> Let's see a replay right here as we show it up on the screen. The first launch of the DC-170. Incredible. Wheels up. Clean pass. Unbelievable numbers there too, the zero to 60 time, the quarter mile time, 8.9 and then incredible miles per hour. Just what a gorgeous car. 150 plus, that's just, that's insane. I bet you can't wait to get behind the wheel one. Oh, I, I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> just incredible day in the history of Dodge. You know, John and Horace have been making cars for over a hundred years. And this has been an amazing day in the history of Dodge and Alex is making her way over to Jim Wilder, our driver once again. Jim, congratulations. Alex, what do you got over there? Jim, you had the best seat in the house. This is an awesome place to be. This is the best seat, no doubt. Man, what an impressive car that has been in the development. Yeah, we've been doing, we've been working on this car for almost three years. Little bits at a time when the, at the beginning before it was really a program. Um, and then hardcore for 18 months or so. Lots and lots of testing, I assume? Lots and lots of testing, which we're not quite done. We still have some more to do. Uh, but yeah, tons of testing, tons of trips, tons of, tons of tracks, track trips and stuff. Uh, congrats on an amazing car, but what an incredible last call. Thank you. It's, it's been a hoot. It's been a great car to end the era with. Thank you. All right, well, we just heard the man of the hour, Tim Kuniskis, describe the DC-170. Man, I mean, this is way beyond expectations. What were you feeling when the chopper was coming in? I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous, man, when the car was rotating. But you can't practice something like that. you got to go no net. So it kind of fits with the car, right? Yeah, and you know, much like the Dodges always do, everything worked out in the end, and it was just an incredible time. I mean, it went off without a hitch. It, you know, it's good to be lucky. It's yeah. good to be lucky. And this crowd here has been amazing. This has just been a great day in the history of Dodge, man. You pulled it off. I can't congratulate you enough. An amazing day. You know, we, we do stuff like this for the 13 million fans and gives them the pride and ownership. So I hope they love it. 
Now, what is the deal with the DC-170 once it hits the dealers? What do you guys have in mind? Well, we're gonna actually open up the allocation. We're gonna tell everybody where they're going, what dealers tonight. Literally right now, you can go on Dodge Garage and you can see where every car is gonna go. And you have a special plan for the VINs as well, right? Well, we have a special plan. If you own a current Demon, you can get the same number again. So if you own number 43 and you'd like a matching set, we'll guarantee you first right of refusal on the same matching VIN. That is so cool. So you can have the 2018 Demon matching VIN with the 2023 DC 170. The OG and the fastest ever. Oh man, I'm so giddy to be a Dodge guy, man. Tim, congratulations. A round of applause for Mr. Tim Kuniskis. Let's bring Alex in for some uh, final thoughts, please, if she's there. Alex, come on over here. Let's uh, wrap up this amazing night here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Favorite moment of the night for you? Oh, I mean, the pass, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the helicopter, the delivery was amazing in itself, but seeing a car perform like that, an eight-second car that you can purchase, when he was listing all the stats and the details, it's like, that sounds like the race car that, you know, you go and build, but the, you can the buy The numbers it. are mind-boggling, but you know what? That's what Dodge is all about, leading the pack once again. Absolutely. All right, we want to thank everybody who joined us here live and who joined us on the live stream with Alex Taylor. My name is Chris Jacobs. It's been our honor to host tonight. Thank you guys so much. And hey, we'll see you at your Dodge dealer.